Hi, my name is Mike, and this is going to be my third Cruise America RV walkthrough review video. If you've seen my earlier videos, you know I've done video walkthroughs on the Cruise America 25-foot RV and 30-foot RV. This video is also on a 30-foot RV. My wife and I just rented for our sixth time, and we were fortunate enough to get a new 2021 Cruise America RV. This model does have a few upgrades and newer features compared to the previous vehicles shown in my earlier videos. So I just wanted to do an update video. As in my previous videos, I'm going to walk around the outside of the vehicle and show you all of the features. And then we will walk to the inside of the vehicle where I'll show you some of the updates and features of the inside of the vehicle. If you've seen any of my previous videos, I'll include links to them in the comments below. Feel free to drop any questions in the comments field and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Starting from the back of the vehicle, you can see that it has this huge amount of storage space underneath where there's a hose. You also have a spare tire there, some additional storage, and a folding table there. There's drains in these storage bins so that you could use them for ice if you're tailgating, for example. Also around the back of the vehicle, there is a trailer hitch. Previously, Cruise America would lock this trailer hitch and you had to pay an additional cost to be able to use it. I believe that is no longer applicable. They just let you use it. Just be aware of the maximum trailer weight there. You can see I'm zooming in on that label. You don't want to tow anything too heavy. I recommend you do check with your rental office as well if you do plan on towing anything just to confirm uh, you know, any additional insurance or liabilities that might be applicable to uh, towing. There are backup sensors along the rear bumper and this will beep if you get too close to something while backing up and it beeps louder the closer you get to an object. There's lights in the storage compartment as well. It's really overall great storage compartment. My wife and I love it. Just be aware, don't store anything too valuable in there as the keys are common and any uh, 751 style key can unlock this. So some minor security issue well known in the uh, RV community. Walking around the side further, we've got your hookup for your city water connection. This is where you could connect the hose if you're staying at a campground that has a uh, spigot. There's also a fill tank here for the built-in water tank in the vehicle and all of the fluid capacities are listed on the cruise america website i believe the fresh water tank holds 40 gallons don't quote me on that i recommend checking their website for the most current specs fuel unleaded gas 87 nothing special dual rear tires and you want to check your tread on there before heading out over in this compartment is the shoreline power connector Normally you would plug it in here. Hopefully this is showing up okay with the light. Normally you would plug it into the vehicle. If you're docked at a campsite where you can plug in, you would plug into a 30 amp circuit. There's also an adapter for a regular 15, 20 amp outlet. Just be aware if you're using this adapter, you're probably not gonna be able to use the microwave or the air conditioner. There's some limitations when using a standard household style circuit. Plenty of cord also in here is there's no built-in TV but there is a coax connection so if you're parked at a campsite where there's a TV and you want to bring a TV inside with you you can connect it there really just you know if you want to watch TV bring a tablet or something it's a lot easier continuing along the driver's side you can see where the uh, sewer hose the stinky slinky as they call it on a lot of uh, channels is stored and also the dump valves for the gray and the black wastewater tanks down there. If you have any questions, I have a separate video that shows how to dump with a Cruise America. I'll link to that in the description as well. The household battery. This is what allows you to operate the lights and stuff when you're not connected to shoreline power and the generator is not running. Over here is your 4,000 watt generator. This provides enough power so if you are stopped somewhere that you don't have shoreline power, you can operate the air conditioner, microwave, etc. Let's continue up along the driver's side of the vehicle. I'm gonna open the door for a moment because I wanted to show you one thing. This is the emergency start switch. If your batteries do get too low for any reason, you can turn that on and that'll give you a boost for starting power. Actually, while we're standing here, 
You can see the new digital dashboard on the 2021 Cruise America. This is really nice because it has things like miles till empty. So you could, for example, get a sense of how many miles you'll be able to go based on the available fuel. You also have an upgraded head unit here, which I believe has some kind of Bluetooth connectivity. We didn't use it. We don't really talk on the phone while we're driving, but you can see over here on the steering wheel buttons for uh, making calls, taking calls while driving. Not recommended. Just be safe out there. Don't talk on the phone while driving. The earlier models Cruise America had two 12 volt outlets on the dash. The newer ones, they've reduced that to one 12 volt outlet and they've added these three USB outlets. So you've got two USB A and one USB C port. That's for charging your phones or powering, you know, GPS, Garmin's, whatever you need to plug in there. Great center storage console. We really love this. This is the same as it was on the earlier vehicles. Tons of space. We'll typically, you know, when we're traveling, we'll usually put like a bottle of hand sanitizer in there just because COVID still isn't quite over, you know. <laughs> Gotta be careful out there. And, you know, we like to spray the dash down a little bit before we start our trip. So as I mentioned, if this does look a little dirty to you, it's because we just returned from a week at the beach. So continuing around the vehicle, from the front, it's a Ford E450 Super Duty. Everything would be the same as it is for a regular Ford E450, motor oil, fluids, wiper blades, etc. If you needed to change any of that for any reason, Ford E450 stuff. Passenger side, more storage. A lock for the door here, so you can lock it open if you're going in and out a lot. Um, exhaust for the vent for the fridge. Propane fill down here and off. They usually recommend you turn that off if you're getting gas or you know driving through. I think they want you to turn it off. Some states have different rules. Follow the rules for your particular state. Some states are required to turn that off before going through a tunnel, for example. And again, also over here, you can see the storage compartment, the table, the light switch, outlets, uh, even outlets in the storage compartment. So overall, great storage, great features on the outside of the vehicle in general. It is about 13 feet high. Be careful when you're driving anywhere. One other thing I forgot to show over here on the driver's side is the outlet for the um, hot water heater. Hot. You can see it's even dark a little bit up there. Be careful around any of the outlets, just like the exhaust for the generator there. One thing I've heard is, you know, if you're running the generator, don't open this window. You don't want the exhaust to get into the vehicle. So we're going to walk around again. I know I'm going over a lot of different information pretty quickly here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and um, check out my earlier videos as well. So screen door, great. Love it. Allows you to leave the main door latched. Close that for bugs open it. My wife and I will use this a lot if I'm outside cooking at the campfire and she needs to hand something out to me. Just open that, pass it through, slide it shut again. Two steps, small fire extinguisher. Earlier models had a bigger fire extinguisher. It looks like this was replaced at some point. You can see where a bigger fire extinguisher fit in there. Not a fan of this small one. Uh, you know, hopefully you'll never need it. Footwell lights. Another switch here. Turns on exterior lighting. So, tons of lights. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll know this already. There's tons of lighting throughout the inside of the vehicle. It's two-way. Flip it once, turns on one side. Flip it again, turns on both sides. And you'll see those lights are located throughout the cabin, underneath almost every flat surface, running through the length of the vehicle all the way to the back to the master bed area, also in the bathroom. Inside the vehicle... I already showed you kind of the cabin area a little bit, like I mentioned. The updates in the 2021 are the digital dash, the change to more USB outlets, the additional functionality on the steering wheel. I also feel like the 2021 and newer vehicles get a little bit better gas mileage. I'll go over in the comments, you know, some of my thoughts on gas mileage. People ask me all the time, what kind of mileage does it get well? How heavy is your foot? <laughs> on our trip, though, we averaged 10.2 miles per gallon, which is slightly better than we were getting on the previous 30-foot RVs. I think the engine and transmission are a little bit smoother and more efficient. So 10.2 miles per gallon, our average. 
yours may differ, obviously. If you're driving up and down mountains, especially. <laughs> so over here on the passenger side, you have a couch and this does have seat belts. Ours are all, you can see them all underneath there right now. We only just travel, it's my wife and I and our dog, so we don't really pull up the extra seat belts. Also over here on the driver's side is the dinette. Folds down, turns into a bed. There's seat belts on that. And outlets, USB outlets. If you do fold this down, there is a storage for the bar. This bar here fits right under there. Over on that side is a vent for the heater. So there's no under seat storage on this. You can see some ductwork through that vent. Over here, circuit breaker fuse panel over there if something's not working you want to check your fuses and your breakers underneath here similar to a house on wheels it's got circuit breakers just like your home does so great windows i've got them you know shaded off right now obviously because it's pretty bright outside but i love sitting in the dinette and looking out this window you know really it takes me back to being a kid even though as a kid we never got to rv travel something i would have loved to do looking out that window watching the world go by privacy curtains more privacy curtains pull across everything pulls across so you can close off the upper bunk area privacy curtains we've got a broom over here this uh, came from cruise america we always try to we try to return our rv as clean as we can you know it's anything you get is only going to be as clean as the person before you and then whatever they had time to do in the shop so as a courtesy think of the people who come after you and at least you know try to sweep it out a little bit you know don't make uh, the cruise america team do all the work Especially in this day and age, you know, you want to clean up after yourself a bit. So, great storage here throughout the kitchen. We've got a small microwave. It's off right now because the generator is not running and we're not plugged into shoreline. You'll see inside the microwave, it does have one of those glass plates. That'll rattle going down the road. So, typically, we'll take that out and put it into storage in one of the drawers. Just rattles are annoying when you're driving. Compartments up here. Plates, bowls, mugs, cups, all up there. The stove is slightly redesigned for the 2021 model RV. And it's got a hood light and a fan. So to turn it on, I'm not going to turn it on right now. It really does take two hands. You want to turn, push this knob down, turn it to the blue ignite, and then press your ignite switch right there. So it's a two-handed operation, one to turn and hold down and one to push. I guess I could do it with one hand, but kind of hard. So that's a safety feature. It was a bit of a learning curve to learn how to turn it on for the first time. We don't usually use the stove anyway. We typically cook outside. More storage throughout the kitchen area. And you can see above the door. Typically for us, we'll use this one for outside stuff, dog leashes, flashlights, umbrellas convenient for grab and go when you're on your way at the door also smoke detector up here also along the roof roof mounted air conditioner again that does only work if you're plugged into shoreline power or if the generator is running so obviously off right now it's got some directable vents filters probably need to be cleaned but gets it about 20 degrees cooler you know when you're camping some tips i can suggest park in the shade if you can if you only have shade on one side try to park with the side with the fridge to the shade you know just to help keep your stuff in the fridge a little bit cooler you know shade your vehicle if you can so fridge updated for 2021 the older ones had were smaller and had power buttons at the top this one has the power buttons here and you can just there's the power and then this is just the temperature and like the new fridge a lot it's bigger inside and has more room for stand-up bottles previously we would have to take the shelf out if we wanted to fit a stand-up bottle in there so fridge big improvement for 2021 model vehicles more space on the doors as well freezer plenty of space for us i mean really we don't travel with much more than a few drink bottles and a couple boxes of hot dogs and hamburgers plenty of space Back here, control panel, generator, water heater, water pump, hours on the generator, circuit breaker light, solar charging light. So the previous ones only had one button to check all of your fluids. Now there's multiple buttons. So LPG, propane, you can see that's full. Gray, black, that's your wastewater tank, your, uh, from your toilet. 
fresh water tank. That's that one I showed on the outside where you can stick a hose and fill it if you want. Battery charge, fully charged. So each button tests one thing, whereas before there was one button that tested all of them. You start and stop the generator, turn on and off the hot water heater. Water pump is if you're not connected to a water line and you want to pull water from the vehicle's onboard fresh water tank. Sink, main sink, uh, thermostat uh, for if you're using the furnace. Drawers, like I said, storage everywhere. New for 2021. The shower has a door. Great feature. The previous ones just had this plastic thing that would always fall off the track. It is a tall step there, stepping out of the shower. Be careful. Treat everything like it's a possible source of being injured. I will sometimes, you know, just brace myself by resting a hand on the shower rail up here when stepping down. It may not look like it in the video. That is a tall step. There's a skylight directly above the shower, which helps for us tall folks. I'm six foot three. I could not fit in there if there was not a skylight above the shower. I wish it were taller. Likewise, the shower head. I wish it were higher up, but as you can see, it's about as high as it can go. Previous models did have a hose. This has got a fixed shower head, so a little bit more limited, but I guess it saves space. Shower handle. Turn it for cold, turn it all the way for hot. A little bit stiff in ours. Uh, may need to spray it with some WD-40. I plan on taking that up with the place when we return it. A couple of loose screws. I'm not sure what that's all about. So I'm going to have them take a look at that. Light in the shower. Love it. Taking a shower at night, you've got a light. It's great. You come back in after a long day of uh, hiking or adventures, you can take a shower at night in the dark. So light switch, boom, off. Bathroom. Similar to the previous models, that's a vent down there for the furnace. Storage, 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 storage. Rooftop vent. There's a couple of these throughout here. Fan, very important for a bathroom. Lights, as we mentioned. Dometic foot pump toilet right there. Make sure your water pump is on or you're hooked up to uh, shoreline water. Press that down, flushes the toilet. Let's see. Decent amount of counter space. Uh, you know, we live in a small home. I feel like this bathroom actually has more counter space than our home bathroom. Some hooks. There are also a few hooks around the front, a few hooks around here. Master bedroom. Not too much change over the previous. You've got some light switches, uh, an access panel for working on the shower. You won't need that. This down here, all the way down. Carbon monoxide detector. I accidentally set that off on our last trip spring aerosol sunscreen in the bedroom so just be aware there's a button on it to turn it off if you set it off by mistake it's loud it'll wake you up if there is actually a carbon monoxide concern windows storage cabinets more storage cabinets more storage cabinets drawers there is no storage under the bed that is a common question we'll lift this up you can see that's uh, a holding tank for there's underneath of this panel there's a uh, mechanical stuff pumps and water tanks so plenty of storage from the outside no storage under the bed common question wanted to cover that looking at it from the back you can see there's more power outlets and usb outlets on one side of the bed only i don't know why both sides of the bed don't get usb and power outlets you seem like th think that's something that would have been addressed after all these years we joke that it's a his and hers be uh, bedroom the his is the man's side with the smaller cabinet the hers side has got the larger cabinet but no power outlets i guess your wife doesn't get a uh, power outlet switches on the side for reading lights be careful don't sit up in bed too fast and hit your head on that doesn't feel good so more roof vents up here so this video is getting pretty long i see we're coming close to 20 minutes as I mentioned at the beginning, I will include some additional information in the comments, my thoughts on gas mileage and pricing of the vehicle. Obviously, there's no set price on these. It varies significantly depending on the time of year, distance traveled, how long you're renting for, whether you need any optional extras like the cooking kit, bedding kit, house cleaning kit, stuff like that. They offer a ton of kits. You can even rent chairs from Cruise America. I didn't realize that, but they even have chairs available for rent now. So... Talk to your salesperson. They can set you up with anything you need for your trip. We typically bring everything from home. We've got a tote in our garage that we store everything in, but I know some people will fly to a destination, won't have bedding or pots and pans. So 
You can get all that from your sales office. Pretty reasonable prices for most of it. Talk to your salesperson. Let them know what you need. Ours in Manassas, Virginia have been great. I can't speak highly enough for the team at the Manassas, Virginia Cruise America location. I can't speak for them at your particular location. There are over 100 locations through North America and Canada. I'll include additional information in the comments section, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop those in the comments as well. I hope this video has been helpful. As I said, this was our sixth time taking a Cruise America RV rental. We do hope to own one someday. We really enjoy it and hope that you do as well. Have a great day. Thank you for watching, and stay safe out there. If this video has been helpful to you, please like and subscribe to my channel for more contents.